you know, retail today, I encourage all investors not to look at it in a binary framework. So there's a lot of capex, there's a lot of investment required in multi-tenant assets today. There's too much square footage in this country. Um, single tenant net lease retail specifically allows for safety and stability. And our mission is to provide uh, our shareholders with st stable returns with the best retailers in the business. And I'm one of them. So it's, it's been a great stop. <laughs> an investor. An investor in, in the company. Uh, how much competition do you have in the triple net lease that's going forward? Because it seems to everybody seems to be focused on that now. Yeah. So are your relationships strong enough where they look to you first or? Yeah, yeah we're unique. Spend? Look, we're unique. The net lease space is pretty wide. It's pretty disparate. Mm -hmm. There's a number of our peers that, that specifically focus on sale leasebacks with retail tenants across the credit spectrum from small, medium sized businesses to the Walmarts of the world or Sherwin Williams. You know, we're truly an aggregator. Uh, average transaction size of under $5 million. We did about 150 transactions last year. So we're typically bu buying or acquiring from third-party sellers and working with our retailers through our development platform uh, to create net new opportunities as well. Josh, you, you've talked about REITs uh, often. You own store capital, not exactly the same sort of REIT that this is. Yeah, but I think, but I think you could own both if you're an investor because I think what, what so what store is, do, I mean, I'm not going to lecture you, you probably know better than I do. <laughs> Chris but, is a friend. I hope yeah. so. <laughs> but, I, but I think like you guys are not real, you're in the same business in name only. Right. Your tenants are very different than his. Correct. He's doing store level economics from small right. business owners and it's not just about like the, the tenant or how many transactions it's about. Do we think that this business is a good bet? And that's not that you don't care if it's a good bet, but when you have a tenant like Walgreens, right. it's not your responsibility to figure out which is going to be their best store uh, because you yeah. know it's Walgreens. It's a very high. So I think if you're an investor, it's almost an interesting way to think about um, one is like a, a large cap play, one's a small cap play. Even though the market caps are comp uh, comparable, the customers are very different. Yeah. Um, could, you, could you speak to that idea yeah. that there's success happening at every level? a uh, small business all the way up to a Walgreens? Yeah, so, so the net lease space is, is, is a very wide space. Right. Stores focused on, Chris can speak to it, he's a friend of mine, of small, medium-sized businesses. Right. You know, our, our focus is on with the Walmarts, the Wawas, TJX, Tractor Supply, Walgreens of the world. Yep. So we're focused on um, really a, a sandbox of 30 to 35 retail industry leaders. We don't see ourselves as a finance company. We're a true real estate company. So we're looking, we're starting with the underlying real estate, driving to the residual value of that real estate, avoiding single purpose boxes, anything that is frankly oversized today where we see decreasing square footage in terms of, of GLA, um, or a single purpose box we're avoiding today. So we want small and medium sized rectangles. If we enter a large box like a Walmart or a, a Home Depot, it's typically in a ground lease structure where we have no investment in the building um, and, and the tenant built it on their own. So there's there's different investment points in the net lease space. Right. Um, for us, store level economics, um, I, I think, can be a misnomer. I think, through absolutely, yeah. Joey. Good having you here. Thanks so much.